Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. We've got a fantastic one for you today, a review of a Klipsch speaker, the Klipsch Forte 4. Now, you may recall, if you've been following this channel for a while, that I used to have in this listening room behind me, Klipsch Cornwall 3s. Yes, I know that's ridiculous and you can watch that video uh, if you want to see what happened with those, but they were great fun and I did really enjoy them. They gave me something that I couldn't get from any other speaker in this room, even though they were ridiculously sized for it. So I thought, well, do you know what? I'd love to experience something from Klipsch's new range of heritage speakers, the 4 series rather than the 3, see how things have moved on. So you might think, go for a heresy, Dave. That'll just about work in the room that you've got because it's tiny, uh, but I didn't do that. And I thought to myself, no, I don't want to do the Cornwalls again. Let's go for something in between. Let's try the Forte 4s because like many of you, you've probably seen other reviews of the Forte 4 and they're supposed to be the sweet spot for the range. And actually, the footprint of the Forte 4 is similar to that of the Heresy. It's just a fair bit taller. So I got them and here they are, the Forte 4s. Firstly, a beautiful looking speaker. Yes, it's far too big for this room once again. And on the back, we have a passive woofer for the bass frequencies alongside that massive one on the front. And um, you look at it and you think really isn't appropriate for this space. And you would be right, sort of. Now, what I'd say first of all with the Forte, it requires a lot of effort in setting it up, particularly I think in a small room, and it requires a lot of break-in. These massive woofers do need at least 100 hours, in my opinion. Now you might not believe in break-in, but trust me, these woofers, particularly that passive one, need to loosen up a bit, because I was not getting very much bass to begin with at all, even when I was pushing it towards the wall. Then as it started to, to build up, I was getting tons of bass and I had to bring them right away from the wall. In fact, about three foot away from the back wall at least. Otherwise, it was a boomy mess. Once set up though, once you've got them exactly how you like them, for me that was well away from the walls and tilted in a little bit, but not fully in towards my ears because I didn't want them to bleed. Then you've got a very, very balanced sound. And I think what surprised me the most about the Forte 4 compared to the Klipsch Cornwall 3 was their audiophile sensibilities. I was expecting it to be raucous again. You know, that kind of fun, I'm in a live uh, performance type of sound. And although you do get elements of that, the Forte 4 is very much more audiophile. And what I mean by that is it's more balanced across the frequency range. Yes, you've got a tilted up sort of frequency, but it, it's, it's much, it's not polite. It's definitely not a polite speaker, but it's much more even. And it images a lot better than I was expecting. The imaging is as good as a box speaker, you know, like, you know, maybe not like a concentric driver as you get from a Kef uh, LS50 Meta or something like that, but it, certainly the average kind of two-way speaker or three-way speaker in a box, it, it definitely, definitely images as well as them. From left to right, up and down, there's a sense of height as well. And you get a sense of depth. Now that's not something I experienced very much of with the Klipsch Cornwall 3. This was a surprise. What was also a surprise was a slight disappointment because the sound wasn't that kind of expectation of visceral thump that I was getting from the Cornwall 3s. It wasn't that kind of rawness to it. It was very much more polished. I was slightly disappointed because it became a bit more like a normal-ish sort of speaker, but it wasn't killing me with the high frequencies. The mid-range was definitely a lot clearer than I was getting through the Cornwall 3s in the past. And that bass was tight. It was punchy, it was rhythmic, it was really very enjoyable. And this is a speaker that I think wasn't instantly lovable, but over time it became something that I came to appreciate more. What I felt though was with that kind of rear um, passive driver, it needed a bit more space. I did at times feel like it was overpowering, more so than I did with the Cornwalls in here, which is an odd thing because the Cornwalls definitely, um, definitely sort of went deeper than the Forte 4, but they didn't resonate as much in the room. And I think that is a very much a small room specific problem or trait of, of that sort of passive speaker hitting uh, backwards, but it, it was still a great speaker, still a great experience. And I think, again, the type of music you want to experience through clip speakers kind of changes your listening uh, habits. I do love Rodrigo y Gabriela, CDs, um, particularly Metro Evolution, which is an amazing CD, which has got a 
a rendition of Echoes by Pink Floyd, uh, their own version, it goes on for several minutes, which is a tour de force of sound. I definitely recommend you listen to it, no matter what your sound system is, it is brilliant. But through a clip speaker, it is something else. It really does, it's, it's a visceral experience. It really does move you, but at the same time bring you with it. And the Forte 4, although not as involving as the Cornwall 3 that I had in here, definitely takes you on a journey which you can't get in the same way for a smaller speaker, such as the um, Heritage Special I've got behind me here. The Heritage Special in comparison, more refined up top. It's got a nicer, um, more meaty mid-range than the Forte 4, but it isn't as big. The scale isn't as big. And of course, the one thing that defines clip speakers more than anything else is dynamics. When you get the drum hits or the strums, you know, the, the attack is brilliant. The, the transient attack is brilliant. It's fast and it's the, the dynamic um, micro and macro dynamics, but probably more macro dynamics with the clip speakers. It's just that pounding, thumping impact that you get from it, which is really spectacular. And if you love dance music, if you're into EDM again, I think the horns are great. They stop and start really quickly. They carry a rhythm really well. I just wish my room was bigger for them. And that's not something that I was really wishing with the Cornwall 3s, even though I knew that they would work better in a bigger room. The Forte 4 just needs a bit more space. And I think that was my problem here. So this review is part review and part discussion. That might be why I'm not going through the usual. What's the treble? What's the mid-range? What's the bass? Because I feel like I've experienced these speakers in this space and I've enjoyed them, but they're not keepers for me because they just don't quite work for me as they should here. But I appreciate what they do well and I kind of, I get the feeling that they can be better than what I've experienced here, even though they're still really good from what I've experienced. Um, what more can I say then? Let's talk about the finish, actually. It's quite interesting. The, the finish of the Cornwall 3s was different to the uh, Forte 4s. Now, I had them in Walnut on the 3s, on the Cornwalls, and I had it in Cherry on the 4s. Both finishes were beautiful, really, really nice. But the 3s had this kind of almost silk finish to it, whereas on the 4s, it's a bit more kind of rough and ready. Both are great. I suppose the rough and ready feels a bit more natural, less kind of sanded and, and, and refined but it's a bit more raw, like real wood. It's a minor thing, but just to let you know, if you're going from the three to the four series, the finish does look a little bit different, but it's still really beautiful with those matched veneers. Um, also seems that the veneer on the four is a little bit harder than on the three. With the three, it was really easy to scratch it. You had to kind of use your kid gloves and make sure you didn't get anything near it. And I did scratch those threes quite badly, um, which I hated myself for forever. But on the fours, they seem a bit more robust and that finish feels like it's gonna last a bit longer than on the threes. Binding posts as well are higher quality on the fours. And it just looks like it's a bit more mature. And I love the grills as well on the fours. They, they are really rather posh. It is a beautiful speaker. I mean, it's retro, but it is smart. And I think if you like the sound of clip speakers, but want something a little bit more audiophile with more imaging and soundstage, you've got a room that can take it, you love the bass impact, you love dynamics, and the kind of music you're into isn't kind of just vocalist, you want to feel the music and really get that visceral approach to it that kind of rocks your soul. This is a speaker that you must check out. I think that pretty much sums it up. I don't think I can really say that I can recommend it if you've got a small room because it it's going to be hard to make work and they are you know tricky with their positioning but in a slightly bigger room and you wouldn't need a huge room but maybe something bigger than this place because it is tiny they are going to be fabulous so yeah clips forte fours love it but with caveats anyway that concludes today's review if you've liked it there's a super thanks at the top please like and subscribe and we'll see you back here very soon